Alright, so today I'll be talking about how I use reflect to practice when working with Craig and how I could improve on my own reflect to practice. Um, the situation I'm talking about occurred at the intervention stage for the CPFPF and what happened was that the Chinese therapist that worked with Craig um, had a goal to straighten out his right leg of which was permanently sort of flexed into a 45 degree angle because of a contracture in his hamstrings. Um, what I reflected on was um, the approach that they used um, in doing this and how this was affecting Craig. Um, so what they were doing, so there's two to three Chinese therapists and they'd often be pushing um, in a downward pressure on his knee, trying to straighten it out and also at the same time pushing their elbows into his quads and trying to activate them. So um, reflecting on this, I used the Gibbs model of reflection and I, um, my thoughts and feelings on the situation was that I was, um, I felt incredibly sorry for Craig because I could see that he was going through quite a lot of um, pain throughout the situation. So he was often trying to sit up during the therapy and if you watched his face he was, um, had quite painful um, facial expressions. Um, however, the Chinese therapists um, didn't pick up on this or they didn't link the two together so therefore they continued with the therapy. Um, I also thought that ethical considerations weren't being met so ethical consideration of non-maleficence which means above all do no harm um, weren't being met. They were putting Craig through quite a lot of pain and also the other ethical consideration that I thought wasn't being met was his right for autonomy, so a right to choice, to say no, to say stop. Um, it wasn't really a, a client-centered approach at all. Um, and the last thing I thought was, or I wondered, was whether or not the Chinese therapist had um, an understanding of what high tone was and what versus what a contracture is and what the likely expectation or the outcome would be for therapy. Um, I moved on, moving on to the analysis part of the Gibbs model. Um, so looking overall at things, I knew that there are expectations um, for therapy from both the family and the therapist. Um, overall they hold the expectations that um, they work towards normal body movement and normal body structure, so having a a leg that can strain out. I think this is um, more on top of the cultural considerations of how disabilities are portrayed in China and that people with disabilities are valued members so they're trying to straighten out the leg in order to uh, <clears throat> help him stand and walk and they wanted to do this because at the moment he gets around in a wheelchair and this isn't this is just um, portraying him as a person with disability. Um, so from all these considerations, I kind of made a few conclusions of how I thought I saw the situation. And from that, I started to come up with an action plan on maybe ways in which we could change the therapy or make it better for Craig not to not have to go through much, so much pain. So. Um, what we did was we tried to educate the therapist and also the family members on the difference between high tone and a contracture. So we showed them ways in which we in Australia tried to break tone and how it wasn't really working for Craig and that it might be due to a contracture, which is something, you know, as much as we would like to overcome, we can't with passive movement and pressure. So how this affected Craig was that we were able to still remain culturally appropriate but were able to do it in a bit more of a client-centered approach and the therapy was a bit more therapy, um, or ethical, should I say. Um, and it wasn't, you know, causing him harm. So what I thought how I could improve on my reflective practice was remaining to reflect on practice rather than in practice. So a bit more reflection on looking at the whole situation and the factors that I, um, 
contribute to it.